Well, Israel is reeling from the single deadliest incident for its military since its invasion of Gaza in late October. This was a funeral held earlier today for one of 21 soldiers killed Monday. They died in an explosion close to the Israel-Gaza border. The IDF saying that it's likely that explosives the soldiers were laying to demolish two buildings went off unexpectedly after a tank protecting the soldiers was hit by an RPG. Well, Israel's prime minister called it one of the most difficult days of the conflict. We bow our heads to the memory of our fallen, and yet we do not for a moment stop striving for an irreplaceable goal, the achievement of absolute victory. Together we will fight, and together we will win. All of this is work towards a ceasefire continues. The CNN analyst says Israeli officials are optimistic about a two-month ceasefire deal offered to Hamas through Egypt and Qatar. CNN has also learned that Israel even proposed that senior Hamas leaders be allowed to leave Gaza as part of a broader ceasefire agreement. Alex Markhart joins us from Washington with the details. Alex, you've broke that second story for us this morning. Give us more insights into what it entails and what the reaction has been thus far. Well, Bianca, for almost four months now, we've heard senior Israeli officials saying that the goal of this war is complete victory over Hamas. It's eradicating Hamas. But clearly the pressure is growing on Netanyahu and his government to come up with some kind of uh, deal for the hostages to be released. And and that would likely entail uh, a ceasefire. What I'm told, one of the new proposals that uh, the Israeli intelligence chief, David Barnea, has proposed to his American counterpart, the CIA director, Bill Burns. This has also been raised in the last a uh, few weeks uh, to Secretary Blinken uh, when he was visiting Qatar is that Hamas's leaders in Gaza could leave the Gaza Strip. Uh, but this would obviously benefit Israel as well. It would weaken Hamas in, in the Gaza Strip. It would essentially lure them out of the tunnels. Um, if they were to go somewhere else, Israel could certainly uh, target them elsewhere. We know that Israel pl- is planning a, a, cam- a global campaign to target Hamas leaders around the world. They uh, killed a, a senior Hamas leader in Beirut earlier uh, this month. So this is something that is, that is under discussion. It really does speak to the pressure that Netanyahu is feeling. It also speaks to the lack of progress that Israel has made against Hamas in these past four months. The most senior leaders of Hamas in Gaza, including Yahya Sinwar um, and Mohammed Daif, who is the uh, military commander, they're still alive, along with their top deputies. Uh, some 70 percent of the Hamas fighting force is still on the battlefield, according to Israel's own estimates. So this is a proposal that has been made, um, but it is something that Hamas is not expected to accept. Netanyahu, uh, sorry, Blinken was told that uh, in his meeting in Doha and in and, and, and conversations with U.S. officials, international officials. I'm told that Sinwar and Daif and others, these are true believers. These are ideologues. These are people who, if they're going to die, they want to die fighting uh, their sworn enemy. But beyond it is still remarkable to consider the fact that Israel would even uh, allow or, or, or think about allowing these officials to leave Gaza. Bianca. Yeah, it gives you a state of just the, the tension within the Israeli government there and the war cabinet uh, about where this war is going and what the prospects are of uh, finishing it with the, uh, the hostages all coming home sooner rather than later. Alex Marquardt, thank you.